Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode we have as promised the game against Ireland now of course if you watched the last episode it's a very important game against Ireland uh, we are top of the table in the European Football Championship 2020 the holders of course Portugal uh, if you did miss that out that was the beginning of the series so uh, anyways the point is that we need to beat Ireland today as you can tell if they do beat us it's possible that they, they go through instead with Austria if they win their game as well uh, the likelihood is I think that Austria qualify anyways because um, you know unless we draw with Ireland I guess then that complicates things but either way it seems like Austria's position is a little bit more safer than ours just because of who they have to play so it's very important Austria kind of screwed this over earlier by uh, you know with uh, the only they're the only team that we drew with uh, so we really need to try and be Ireland here today and uh, solidify our top spot there so we can go into the second round i think of the uh euros now i thought last time i said i think that's the quarterfinals was actually top two teams qualify for second round i think before it used to be quarterfinals but when they added more uh national teams to the euros uh it, it turned into a second round thing but anyways either way our aim is for the quarterfinals so if we do fail here and get knocked out early in this stage the likelihood is that will be fired as well so just to keep, refresh your mind the only injury is still Delhi Ali he's got 10 days to three weeks uh time for his recovery uh hopefully if we do go into the second round maybe he can make it in time. i'm not really sure to be honest how long uh to be it doesn't really show us here you know on our calendar when the next one is just as quarterfinal but i'm pretty sure second round should be somewhere in between here uh but yeah if we do make it to the quarterfinal or whatever later latter stages that we make it into uh, he'll be needed so this is the team we're going for today kind of a rotated side uh, some players are tired of course some key players like lalana who are you know normally starting uh yeah and just because just to keep this squad fresh really if we do get into second round we will want a full strength side so we'll run through the first team in just a moment's time let's let the teams warm up instead so yeah um just a very tough game against ireland i would say uh not tough because of the opponent per se but more about the expectations my england team are young and uh, they tend to become nervous more often than I don't know other players that I normally deal with I think it's the international stage as well that players feel more pressure on the international stage than the club stage I found that players are a lot more um, what do you call it they feel a lot more nervous usually the international than any other time might just be English players because the only other the only national team I've ever managed is English players but anyways so this is our team Rashford Kane is a starting uh, starting striker partnership as usual Lingard's playing an advanced playmaker. We've got Ben Pearson there. Henderson's a star normally as well as Dyer. We've, we've, we've got enough key players to really get a result here. So Rose and Klein there as well as Stones and Shawcross. Um, we've also gotten a day's rest extra than Ireland have. So really, we should hopefully play on that uh, advantage. So let's kick off. Let's tell our players what we expect from them. The expectation is that we win this game so let's do it let's what should we say hmm let's do common lads with favorites here let's see what you can do plain simple and they should know to meet expectations as favorites so let's skip that a little bit and it is england who kick off so um can we get the result to match expectations? It's not even meet expectations just yet. It's the expectations of this game, but not the expectations of the competition. Uh, I think this time round, Ireland is already looking dangerous. Come on, boys, wake up. Um, yeah, this time around, we are expected to... Good God, what's going on there in the back? Anyways, it is Ireland 1, England 0, and the ball just bouncing about the box until Ireland did score. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I think this time around in the Euros, we are expected to go further than the last Euros we were in. And I think as the team continues to develop and we sort of, you know, move through the transition period, uh, expectations are rising. Also, I'm pretty sure the FA is not always going to be okay with just, um, you know, scraping by in every tournament. I'm pretty sure eventually they'll want some type of results. And... Uh, Let's see if we can do that now. Rashford to Stones, and that's the clear-cut chance. For some reason, he's missed it. 
Uh, I guess because he's a centre-back, but at the same time he is a centre-back who has been taking England penalties. So uh, you would expect him to finish there. But either way, another highlight here. And maybe we can uh, capitalise on this one. Rashford through Pearson. A strange ball up to Kane. But either way, Ireland are the ones who come away with it. And now they're looking to be dangerous again. Every second ball, they're there. And it looks like their wingers are destroying our fullback so far. But we deal with that well. Dyer's there to cover. Kane to Lingard. He's going to play it square. Kane. Through to Rashford. Is he going to score? Of course he's going to score. What kind of question is that? And there you go. A draw is not the best result. But I think it would still help us qualify. Um, but really we're looking for the three points here today. Can't settle for any less. Rashford. Lingard. Lingard. Yes, it's Lingard. Klein, though, finds Pearson, and that's another clear-cut chance that is not taken advantage of. And instead, we've scored from our only half-chance in the game. Anyways, Ireland, though, looking to attack. Dyer deals with it well. Rashford, counter. Let's do it. Taking everyone on, and uh, instead, he's just dribbled his way into an Irish player, I suppose. Shawcross all the way back to Hart, and we will have to build over again. But Pearson's happy to do that. Henderson, Lingard, through to Kane. A uh, bit of a weird knockdown, but either way, Klein's got on the back for us. And temporarily, he lost the ball, but Lingard's got it now. And again, he's just knocking the ball forward to Kane. It's a bit of a strange thing, but Ben Pearson makes up for his mistake. And there you go, 2-1. Makes up for his earlier miss. I'm not sure if that's his first international goal. I can't remember. Nah, commentator didn't really say anything. I don't, I don't think that's his first international goal, is it? Eight caps, one goal. Well, I guess it is. Unless this one didn't really count yet. I don't know. Either way, England 2, Ireland 1 at half time. And let's keep that up, boys. Okay, I think I said the wrong thing there. The Ireland were looking dangerous at times before half time. So I should have told my players I expect to see more from them. Not tell them off, just tell them you've done well, but we need some more improvement, which is kind of true. Um, but either way, hopefully my players can just push on and forget about my team talk entirely. Kane though, he's got the ball. I'm pretty sure that should be a clear cut chance. I, I think the game counted as a half chance, but I don't know. I guess that's just the typical performances that I've been seeing from England so far. Rarely clinical. I'm going to bring it up once more, but the only game they were clinical was that defeat of Germany, the 6-2 defeat or something along the lines of that. But there you go, Kane, Kane making me look like an idiot, basically. Either way, England 3, Ireland 1, and I will gladly take this result, but we're going to have to look to make some changes. Some players are exhausted. I mean, if, if five of your players are in 69% fitness, or conditioning rather, I suppose, uh, it, you know, it kind of tells its own story, isn't it? So we have to try and make some smart substitutions here. So I think, uh, let's see. All right, so Dyer for Cook, Henderson. I think I'll just take off the players who've been performing well. So Henderson for Prowse. Prowse is actually supposed to be an attacking midfielder supposed to be the backup to Lingard which is you know kind of sucks to be playing him in box to box midfielder role but uh, Ben Pearson's the only player actually yeah we'll do that so we'll shift them across um, no wait sorry we'll do that again so Lalana's coming on he's supposed to be playing a centre midfielder on attack or Prowse box to box midfielder and that way Ben Pearson or Lalana rather Lalan is the one who does the centre midfielder attack role. He's supposed to be back up to Delhi Ali, which is why I'm saying we have to be a bit smart with this because we've. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so Lalana's, you know, do technically doesn't have a backup. Um, I mean, he is the backup to Delhi Ali, but he doesn't have a player to rotate with, so we have to kind of shuffle him with players who are a little bit more fit I suppose uh, you know some players are gonna have to play two different roles at times but yeah Ireland are showing here that they're not really gonna settle for uh, you know anything other than putting up a hundred percent of a fight so it is 3-2 now 
and I really don't trust my team to keep the defense together. I'm glad I brought on Lewis Cook at half, uh, halfback. Maybe I should have subbed one of my defenders, but with Lewis Cook covering them, hopefully they should stand firm. That being said, there is a highlight here and does it go our way? Instead, Ireland on the counter, but Klein is good at mopping it up, I suppose. And he did just knock it pointlessly forward. And again, Ireland winning all the second balls. Can we get it this time? Nope, we can't. Hogan? Yes, Stones. Well done. Lalana to War Prowse to Lingard. And suddenly we're the ones who are on the counter. Kane, can you do something here? Come on, boys. Let's hit them where it hurts. Klein to Lalana again. Through to Rashford. And that is the third clear cut chance we miss. Yes, we've scored three goals, but none of them have been our clear cut chances. And that is worrying. I guess it's a good thing at the same time that we're still scoring despite not, you know, I guess it's not being our clicker chances. But anyways, one more highlight before the end of the game, possibly Rashford, damn it. Four clicker chances and nothing scored. But the game will hopefully, please don't make me eat my words, end 3-2 to England if we can deal with this. But Cunningham seems to have different plans. I'll oh, just steal the ball from him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Seriously, boys, come on, put some pressure. There you go, Stones. Well done. And 3 2 to England. Thankfully, we've won that game. And I don't really feel like praising my players, but we have qualified, so I think we kind of have to do. Our goal difference is superior to Austria, so we do go through, through Bosnia. Horrible uh, Euros performance. They haven't gotten a single point. I think they'll be disappointed with that. Uh, Ireland managed to get three, so kind of respectable. But anyways, I think let's see who we draw. And then if the game is close by, I think we can show you that game. But if it's too far off, I think we'll just save it for the next episode, for tomorrow's episode. Come on, where is the draw? Oh yeah, Premier League winners were Manchester City. And the teams relegated were Swansea, Reading and Middlesbrough. Apollo... Diabla, Dibala, Diabala. Um, yeah, top scorer. It it was. I was checking in every now and then whenever there was international period and whatnot. But um, yeah, it was between the two Manchester clubs basically. United were very close, and I think they kind of fell at the last hurdle again. Um, but yeah, City edged it, and. It's kind of a repeat of history, isn't it? So I think Marino and his men will be disappointed at that, considering, I think anyways, that they were leaders for the majority of the season. Um, but yeah, no real, no real indication on when our draw for the second round will be. So... Yeah, the other teams still have to play their games. Let's see the schedule. Second round's on the 27th. So I'll tell you what. I'll just come back for the for the um, for the 27th instead of you know this, these incredibly long highlights. Uh, not highlights. Um, simming. So just give me a moment. I'll be back in a moment's time, and uh, we can watch the second round game being played. So let's go. All right, hi guys, and welcome back. Uh, for the episode, for the rest of the episode rather, and uh, yeah, second round, we did manage to draw against Serbia, uh, well, draw Serbia rather, and we'll be playing against them, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's the 28th of June instead of the 27th, so we did get, thankfully, an extra day's rest, and uh, that's pretty much all the updates there is to give, so let's just uh, try and figure out who to play for this game. So Klein is in need of a good period of rest, but he's not necessarily tired. John Stones is exhausted, so we'll move him off for his backup, who is Steve Cook, the ball-playing defender. Uh, Smalling probably a little bit more deserving in terms of how he's performed for his club, but actually I think Steve Cook has done quite well too, to be fair. But either way, Steve Cook is the ball-playing defender, so Smalling's a backup to Shawcross, so we'll just have to hold on. Rose has been suspended because of too many yellow cards, so we'll bring on Luke Shaw, who is the key man anyways. And uh, let's see who else. So Dyer, key man, but unfortunately has to come off Lewis Cook. Uh, Henderson, how are you doing? You need a good period of rest, that's fine. Lingard, period of rest. 
Kane, good period impressed. Alright, that's fine. So everyone else seems to be okay. I think we can bring on Lalana, who also seems to be okay as Ben Pearson's um you know uh well take him off basically. So I think actually that Lewis Cook is supposed to be a box to box midfielder, so he shouldn't even be playing as halfback. It's supposed to be Ben Pearson. It's just been that players have been moved around so often. I think we've kind of gone back to our first eleven now again. Well, I mean, other than Dyer and Cook coming on for Stones. So, really, yeah, I mean, so like two players who aren't playing. So, yeah, we should beat Serbia based on our first 11, but at the same time, we should beat them because of expectations. If you want to know what's been going on in the other fixtures, we'll show you that here. So, let's go to second round. There you go, Port Portugal beating Belgium. So, they're into the quarterfinals. Um, Spain and Ireland haven't played yet. None of these games. It's just Austria who beat Ukraine as well. So, just two games so far. Um, but this is a draw for the quarterfinals. So, we're possibly going to face Germany most likely. Unless Holland surprise them, which would be great for us. Because then maybe we can beat Holland a little bit better. Um, Semi-final likelihood is, uh, I guess, Portugal. I mean, they are kind of favourites, aren't they, after the performances? But Spain are a very tough side too. Uh, in terms of the final, if we do get all the way there, the likelihood is that we'll be facing off against the likes of either France or Italy. But anyways, let's kick off for today's. Let's kick off the second game of today's episode, and just seriously get into business. Can we qualify into the quarterfinal and meet expectations? That is the minimum expectation, really. So again, once more, if we do fail to get the result that's necessary we could find ourselves without a job and that would end the series really um, so yeah no pressure boys <laughs> we're playing some strange formation against uh, Serbia and uh, I would expect nothing but a win from today's game I really would I really wouldn't I really wouldn't expect anything other than a win that makes more sense anyways kick off let's skip that little intro that they always do and I think what we should do is actually have replays on. I don't know why I haven't been having replays on the whole time. Um, behind goal low, I think, is a nice camera angle for scoring. But anyways, Klein to Kane. And are we going to score within the first minute of the game here? The highlight hasn't ended. So is... Okay. I was being hopeful. And that, <laughs> that hope turned into reality. And Henderson got the first goal for us within a minute's time. And we're going to get a beautiful view of it here. Linger to Lalana, box to box midfield, a shot really from outside of the box. It's not closed down in time and goalkeeper can't do anything as it hits the post and goes in. And that was one hell of a goal and I actually forgot to tell my players to encourage them really after that type of goal. And yeah, it should be smooth sailing from here. But I doubt Serbia are going to lie down easily. But is Lalana? I don't know who scored there. It looks like Kane ran away with it but there is an own goal according to the game. We'll get another chance here. It's just pinged around in the box. Lana, Markovic, Kane. Oh, that was one hell of a deflection. I guess that isn't on goal because Kane's shot was going off target completely. And suddenly we find ourselves 2-0 up in a game that shouldn't be this easy, I suppose. And Serbia looked like they didn't want it to be this easy. But it's Lingard to Kane and he headers it for some reason instead of leading the counter. And there's Serbia who's going to try and find a way through. That's one hell of a shot, but thankfully it's hit the crossbar and England run away with it. I think my boys need to realise that they have to stay concentrated if they want to continue getting this result. Because Serbia are really meeting us in terms of statistics. You know, possession, they're edging possession as well. They do have a, you know, they're playing four in the middle as well, but they're also playing three at the back. So they, they're very comfortable with dealing our two up, with the two strikers that we've got up front. So we do... You know, we have to try and do something here. So, Rash just had a horrible performance. And maybe we should move him around with Kane and see if he'll improve. Kane's been a bit of a quiet game. So, maybe that will, you know, help both our strikers perform. They are outnumbered. But they should still be able to deal with a threat of three centre-backs. Should perform well enough, to be honest. If you play one striker against three centre-backs, then that kind of makes sense why your strikers had a bit of a quiet game. But if you're playing, you know, two strikers and an advanced playmaker, by the way, an attacking midfielder, that kind of suits you. And, oh my god, Ben Pearson, you freaking scared me. I thought you were going to score an on-goal. Because Hart 
looked like an idiot there for a second. And Serbia are on attack here after that weird knocking of the ball forward. Oh, Ben Pearson, you idiot. You absolute idiot. Could have cost us the qualification to quarterfinals. There's still like a good 40 minutes left and Ben Pearson has been sent off. And we have to rearrange things here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Kane back to the complete forward support role. We're actually going to substitute Rashford for Dyer, who's supposed to be getting a rest, by the way, for the quarterfinals. So this just completely destroys our plans. And this is basically how we're going to have to play. I think I'll go into contain instead. I know it's really early for that, but I would rather... I would rather do that, and I'm just going to switch some rolls around to help with that. It's probably not a good idea to completely sit back like this, but the likelihood is, with, you know, Serbia already looked kind of dangerous at moments during the game. Um, the likelihood is going to look, they've already done it, which is them going into very attacking mode so we'll stay and contain if we feel like we're only going to come away with a draw or whatever then we can you know go into push into a bit of a counter role I suppose but anyways it has hit the 60th minute and there are a couple of players who are tired so we can start to look to look to make substitutions Joel Henson has a great game so we take him off for Lewis Cook and rest him Klein same thing goes for him and let's try and give some of our good performing players a bit of rest before the quarterfinal if we still do qualify Looks like Contains helped us a little bit. We are keeping possession a tiny bit better. No real highlights for Serbia, so I suppose it's a good thing. What did my assistant say there? Since Ben Pearson has been so we should try to be careful and tighten up and preserve our lead. Uh, okay, I'm already on Contain. I don't think I need to play even safer. Knowing my defenders, if I tell them to play it safer, they're not too good with their ball control they're passing I suppose all that sort of business um, so the likelihood is that by playing it safer they'll try and keep possession a bit more I think or does that mean that they're gonna knock the ball forward either way it looks like we're gonna come away with a 2-0 result and thankfully Ben Pearson didn't cost us there but he will cost us in terms of fitness we won't be able to rate the rest any other players uh, Dyer, who should have been getting rest today actually had to play and the likelihood is, is he's going to have to play as well in the quarterfinals. So we're really going to be struggling in terms of fitness. But yeah, result we wanted. And that's great for us. And we'll see who we'll face in the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll save that for the next episode. So I think unless the draw is straight away from now, then uh, you'll have to find out in the next episode just who we... Who we uh, came up who will come up against basically so call final is supposed to be against Spain oh no it's supposed to be against either Holland or Germany and when do they play yeah Holland and Germany don't play until the 30th so let's forget about that I'll just you know you'll find out next episode who we did draw for that game and uh, yeah so that will be all for today's episode so if you did enjoy it then please do of course hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2017 content uh, and as always guys Thank you all for watching.